um, episode 33 of the Sisyphus Complex Solution and this one is called Wacky Racists. You might need to be a certain age to understand what that is uh, playing on there and that but uh, there'll probably be a few references that I use this week and that that some of you will either understand or you won't. That's up to you to guess but anyway. And it's suffice to say that there are some bits of information that I'll be divulging that do have some relevance to the title. So anyway, moving forward with the process of recreating the Hoskins wiring, the Hoskins government wiring map for being able to see what kind of system would actually be better. And we're in the department for digital culture, media and sport and moving forward into the next three offices under the auspices of that minister ministry. I, I have, I'm going to have to start giving these sorts of explanations a little bit and that because I still think people when they do actually watch this you, know, you still haven't got a clue what I'm doing but anyway. So let's move into the uh, the next ones, the next three offices that I'll be doing today. So let's begin with the National Heritage Memorial Fund. Uh, there's only one number that I need, need to really pay any attention to in this one and that which is the um, the 13,474,000. Um, that is, um, like I said, with this particular fund and that's, it's not revenue based obviously, so that is the burden of money, but from the information that I've looked at within this, it is not a taxpayer burden as such. It's um, lottery funding, which is convenient because I'll be going into that a little bit later on. Well, after this one actually, but so. There's some details here and that is to, on the, on the screen as to what it is that they're supposed to be about, um, how they're supposed to be a, a funder of last resort I've put some examples on the on the uh, the side there, and that to show you the kinds of heritage that apparently they're supposed to be saving. But anyway, the more I sort of looked at this one, the more I was thinking that this literally ends up being one of these scenarios where somebody's having something paid for or bought. Because, I mean, there's a reason why they wouldn't have been able to raise the money themselves. And so they'll come, apart from using their own money, of course. Um, it, it just strikes me as one of these scenarios whereby somebody's saying that this has got some sort of heritage benefit where rather than paying for it yourself, you just get to punts off of this fund and get it done for you which there is a particular part to this is that well there's several parts to this but one of them is that heritage itself the term heritage it, it when I look at the things that they've been funding and buying it does make me wonder what the hell sort of thing they think I mean heritage to me in that suggests a, at least a reasonable amount of history and a lot of these items on on this list for, for the particular period 2019 to 2020 and it just looks like they're buying any old shit so that's well, that's one problem another problem is is that when they turn around saying that um, we need to have oh shut up the printers playing up when they have these um, items that they're saying have got some sort of relevance and that to keep for the purpose of heritage and maintain I mean you know and I, I, I want to be able to make sure that we've got stuff that is of historical relevance but then why isn't the first port of call to turn around and say well whoever it is that owns this particular item it's obviously crap otherwise you wouldn't be getting rid of it and 
you have certain parts on there, and that's that are to do with like you know doing some repairs on a house and things. No, this is somebody's taking the piss here. But for the for the ones that are items rather than houses or whatever, that was, why aren't they having a conversation with the people that have got this item and saying, "Well, donate it." Surely that's priority number one. Not can you buy it from them? They so, said, "Well, if you donate it, and that you can still you can still even own it, but it'll be put in this particular museum or university or whatever it is, and that they're turning around and claiming that it needs to go to." I mean. It just makes no sense to me at all. I mean, the one the one fella in particular, what was it? There was somebody's house that's that's basically some director from like the nineteen seventies or whatever, and that. Um, he, I think he did the first, he did uh, one of the, what was considered to be one of the first punk films, Jubilee. But I mean, really, is is that person? Oh, Derek Jarmer, I think, is the one. The Prospect Cottage. I mean, really? I mean, I guarantee if you went round to the vast majority of people and said, oh, you know, Derek Jarmer, we've got to protect some of it, some stuff from his cottage. I dare say the first thing that would come out of most people's mouths is, who the fucking hell is that? It's just, no. Nah. I, 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 don't, I don't see the point in it, but... The two, the two parts to it are is that first and foremost you turn around and say to these people well you know do as I've just suggest, suggested if you've got something that you want in there and ask the buggers to donate it it doesn't need money but considering this is not coming out of direct taxpayer funding the one thing that I would do with this particular office is just take it off the books it doesn't it doesn't belong underneath this particular ministry it shouldn't it should not be listed on a government website and there should be no connection. I mean, if, if somebody wants to do something like this, I mean, like I say, I'll deal with the lottery in a minute, but if somebody wants to run something like this, buying crap on behalf of somebody that doesn't want to use, you know, spend their own bloody money, raise the funds yourself. Do it yourself. I, do, I just don't see the point in this one at all. But like I say, I mean, if they can, if they can get money, via other means, do what you like, I don't care. But no, not part, not listed within the government offices anymore. Take, I'll take that one straight off of the, uh, the books of uh, DCMS. So that one solves that problem. And here we go into the lottery. Now, Everybody knows what the national lottery is, and that, and then obviously, in that you've got the um, the Euro Millions and all this sort of stuff, and that. And everybody in the various countries, and that you've got your own systems for lottery. Now, in terms of this particular one, you've then got the nat national lottery, what's called now the Community Fund. So basically, this is the um, the money that everybody's you know everybody's buying their lottery tickets, and what they don't give out in prize money goes into this community fund that does blah 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 I have got some examples on there and that and it will lead into the wacky racists in a little while so the net gain that they've presented for the period of 2019 to 2020 so after all money has been dispersed to the projects that they've you know got on the map up here they're saying that there's a net gain there of 82,398,000. So again, this is not taxpayer burden, so it wouldn't be a number that I would add into, well, no, I actually do have to add it into the equation, but um, it's something that has to come with a bit of a side note. But it, the, the immediate question that is raised there is, why have you kept 82,398,000? I mean, when I come across so many of the other offices that are intent, basically intentionally making sure that the, the income and the expenditure is exactly the same, why are these people keeping this money back? Surely that could be, if you're keeping that sort of money in that, then surely that should go towards the prize money. But anyway. The other thing with this particular fund is that apparently we need to understand as well that this is not just 
national lottery money. Included within this is £68,530,000 from dormant accounts. Now that seems slightly unusual um, because I think we have discussed before in one of the other departments and that have how they have access to like dormant housing um, assets of various descriptions so it seems like these are the account robbers now this one this one pisses me off a little bit um, because um, I'm, I'm definitely going to need to check. I would definitely need to run, do the review and reform and everything, and that to be able to check the ethics on this, because I have had some personal experience of this one. Because I used, I had um, how many? I think I had two. Oh, I can't remember. I had a number of accounts in the UK. Some of them I'd set up for the kids and that, so that that, that ends up being separate. But there was two accounts in particular, and that that were mine. And. They were set obviously in that in, in UK. I think at that point they were in the UK Building Society. I think that, that became Santander. And I left. Obviously, I left the UK and that, and I was away in Japan for sixteen years. And um, when I came back, those accounts no longer existed, and the money that was in those accounts no longer existed, conveniently for them or potentially conveniently for these buggers here which was uh, not exactly ethical of them to do especially when I turned around and said that uh, you know why have you shut down my account and they they literally lied and said I had instructed them to shut down the account well no I didn't and it ended up being I mean the same as everything that happens these days in the UK you have to end up having an argument with everybody and it went through to an ombud the financial ombudsman's office and um, despite the fact that Santander couldn't provide any evidence of me having given this instruction the ombudsman came back to me and said oh yes we found the evidence and yes you did close the account I said, okay show me don't just say that you found the evidence show me the evidence because I didn't give any instruction whatsoever but they couldn't give me that but they still wouldn't do anything about it I mean, it's absolutely farcical rip-off system so the fact that they're getting this 68 68 and a half million considering we've got a population of 70 million just shy that sounds very very dodgy to me and I wonder how many people's accounts are being raided by pricks like this and essentially then the government raiding people's accounts just because you don't use a bank account for a period of time don't mean to say that you have to, you get the right to just shut it down willy-nilly so yeah I'd need to be checking into that one right so the total money this fund gets from people playing the lottery at least during that particular period of time it was um, seven hundred and ten million four hundred thirty four thousand now I then have to look at the the setup as to how it is that they're actually running this lottery so what I've done there is I've divided it, divided it up on a, a weekly basis I mean you do have it um, twice a week but I've div divided that up as to how much money they're getting on a weekly basis and it works out as £13,662,192 per week now as much as I don't have the record for the lottery awards for precisely that period to be able to check and see exactly every, everything that takes place I can get an indication as to how this works by using the the last three months numbers 
So what I did there is I checked the last three months numbers and that worked out at around about 22.5 million per week. So essentially what we can calculate from this is that we're looking roughly at something like around about a 60-40 split. So that would basically mean 60% 60, 60 is payout, 40% is kept in this community fund. Now the numbers as I've run through that um, three month, this past three month period and that, it, it does depend very much on week by week basis and not every week is paying out large sums of money by any stretch of the imagination. So out of the 23 separate draws that I looked at, five of them were relatively significant payouts, um, generally speaking anywhere between 25 and 35 million. The rest of them tend to be like between five and eight, that sort of thing. So, but this is this is essentially the kind of calculation to figure out how this system is actually set up and working. So, the consideration there has to be as to first and foremost that whether the sixty forty split is fair and how many people know about. This that kind of um, that that kind of setup when they're handing over their money every week, and one consideration that would give people an idea as to whether it is legitimate or not, it basically depends on what the community causes and these projects depends on what they are, really, as to uh, whether people would consider this to be a a just system. Now what I then did was have a look and you know, so I've got these couple of examples on there. I had a look at some of these projects that are receiving the money from this community fund. It's not a community fund is it really? But anyway. And I can say straight away in that, that not every single one of the projects that is receiving money is going to make your blood boil. But some of them will. And actually, quite a few of them will. So, you know, feel free to have a look at the list yourself. And what I can basically deduce is that this is where your wacky racists come into play because it does seem very much that and there's a rather significant number of these projects that are based on skin colour and in one instance there's also one that is actually specific to a, uh, a particular nationality so I'm, I'm sure there's going to be a whole bunch of people up and down the UK and that, that won't particularly be surprised by that and it is actually on the screen there so it's specifically for Somali families that are living in the in the UK. That's nice, isn't it? <laughs> That's I mean the amount of the amount of money of the, the ones of the examples that I'll put up there. Now I mean these are these are not very large amounts of money. So but then this this is part of the problem is when you don't get when when you've got a whole range of different basically racist projects. But the amount is not that much. It's oh, you know, it's it, it's not that much money, so you know you don't have to worry about it. But when you've got a great big long list of them, getting five hundred and eighty-eight point two million a year, hmm. We also have to then remember about these charities. How much money actually does go to the cause? There was a couple of others that raised some eyebrows for me as well. That um, There was one called Lockdown 2.0 and another one called Adapting to the New Normal. Right. Safe to say, overall, what we do notice with all of these so-called projects 
is that unsurprisingly, once again, we come across an organisation that doesn't really seem to like white British men. So, yeah, a little bit of something to be considering here, and that that um, the government have effectively got this office that is quite blatantly racist towards white people, and they are misandrists. So, it is exactly the same kind of bullshit that we've come to expect from the Conservatives. And when I say the Conservatives, I do mean the Conservatives, because they've been in power for 10 years now, and they've had all that, all that time to make sure that this sort of shit doesn't take place. But they have not only kept this stuff in place, but they basically promote this shit and do nothing about it, because it all fits in quite nicely with their little... I dare say the Agenda 2030 plan, considering it was the Conservatives that signed us up to that in 1992 under John Major. So, essentially, with this particular community fund, I would basically enter that particular office and tear them a new arsehole, put it that way, as part of the review and reform. And... Uh, the previous office, the National Heritage Memorial Fund, well, suffice to say, they would be fucked. They wouldn't be getting any money. Now, the chances of most of these projects actually having, like I say, I mean, any of the money in that actually going to the people that they claim to does seem somewhat unlikely. But the one thing with all of this and that, where I, I do get a little bit bored of having to repeat myself on certain occasions, but then I know I have to keep repeating stuff and that because it's the only way it fucking well sinks in with people. I dare say there's a... From what I've said straight away, there'll be a whole bunch of people that will sit in there going, oh my God, and that, what, a, what a racist, oh, he's a white supremacist and all that sort of shit. I don't think people quite understand the reverse as what of what's being of what's been taking place here because once again when you have people that are setting up a little bit of what is essentially and that's race baiting and therefore looking towards hoping that there's going to be some sort of a race war when you have a particular demographic that is in the minority and you've set off a race war Guess who's going to lose? If, if anybody thinks that this literally is these people being all nicey nicey towards the minorities now and that, and oh, we want that equality and all that sort of, you know, all of the flowery language of the Agenda 2030. You have to understand the history of these people. And the fact that at no point in anything that these people have done have they ever been interested in anything other than their own kind. The only time you'll ever have seen these people near anything like an ethnic minority as if it's just sort of passing by, or as, as basically, and that's, I mean, if, you, if, if anybody wants to go on about the slavery and things like that, that's exactly what they would have had them for. They don't have them as buddies, and they sure as shit don't have them in their family, do they? So, if anybody thinks that there's some sort of real intent here to push some kind of scenario that is not simply based on just getting white men in particular to be absolutely furious and then to have some kind of severe backlash. If, if somebody's not understanding that by now, there's something seriously wrong with you. You're really not thinking. Because whenever people like this cause any issues, and that's only, you only have to look into the wars that they've had and so forth, they don't, they don't exactly... They don't exactly target their own kind, do they? So it's somewhat unlikely 
that their intention in doing all of this shit is going to be, oh, we love black people now. We love minorities now. We hate those nasty little white people that they happen to be themselves. So the chances of that being an actual goal are, I would suggest, slim to none. And though I did actually have... Um, I've heard some well. I've heard some news today in that which I could have made up of a bit of a slide because it, it, it's another analogy in that that um, gives a bit of an indication as to what I'm talking about. I didn't have time to put it in the slide today because the main story behind behind this just took part. Well, I mean, I only heard it a little while ago. Where basically they've started saying on the news that. Black women have to be particularly careful now because they are considerably more likely to die during childbirth. So what you've got there, and that is uh, a little bit of psychology to the black women to say, you know, you, you shouldn't, you shouldn't really have children because you know the chances of you dying become significantly increased. Now. As much as it's been fairly blatant and in your face in um, the US with um, that Planned Parenthood where they conveniently have all the abortion clinics massed around areas where you have a quite a large black population, it's not been quite like that in the UK, but I dare say they've had their own little measures around that. But this one seems like a, a new version of the exact same kind of thing. How can we psychologically make black women now think having kids is not a good idea because you'll die? So, how, you know, how are you going to get that population down and that while we're baiting the white men until we've driven, driven them up the wall so bloody much and that, that they react? Well, there's a few problems with the narrative that they've created around this and that... Um, you have to understand a little bit around behaviour or science, and that is that these people are actually as thick as shit. Because as much as they're playing that game to have a psychological effect on black women, they're also talking about this taking place within the UK. They're not talking about black women out in, I don't know, like Botswana or the Congo. I mean, the Congo wouldn't really matter in that because if, they, uh, if they're not going to kill the mothers and that they kill the children anyway and that when they're sending them down to get the cobalt to stick in their poxy electric vehicles so you know they cut they get rid of the pop the black population that way in those countries so they're talking about the uk specifically here now that then kind of leads to a problem of they keep on also saying that you know the nhs is the envy of the world the nhs is brilliant the nhs is absolutely marvelous despite the fact that they've been responsible for denial of health care for the past 13 months. But, you know, the NHS is wonderful, an amazing place, best technology, best this, that and, the other, best, best that and the other, you know. But apparently they can't save black women now in childbirth. That's essentially what they would be saying. So then they're, by that very nature, saying that the NHS is racist, according to these people. But then it goes a little bit further, because there's a strange part to that. And if anybody remembers, when we go back to something like around about April and May of last year, we were bombarded with a whole yet another load of propaganda. And actually, there was a video that was doing the rounds that said, clap for me now, where it was all black black people, ethnic minorities, and all this sort of stuff, because apparently the NHS would not survive without these people. They are the backbone. They are the, the core people within the NHS. And we, we should all suddenly recognise that. And so if you're going outside like a performing monkey and clapping for the NHS that's just denied all of your health care, that's predominantly and entirely dependent on black people and ethnic minorities. So the messaging over the past year has now become 
black people and ethnic minorities run the NHS. The NHS is shit and incapable of looking after black women. So then the racists are the black people and ethnic minorities running the healthcare system and they're killing their own women. If you follow the narrative that they've put together over the, over the past year. At what point would somebody actually turn around and go, hang on a minute. As, can somebody not understand how much bollocks and total bullshit this propaganda machine has really become? And you, you shouldn't be surprised, really. I mean, if you, if you do ever bother to take a look at some of these behavioural scientist organisations, in particular the ones that are working with the UK government at the moment, I know that there's a few of them that have got some... Um, I think I've put links to it in previous episodes, where they've got their own YouTube channel and they're saying the various different things around education and this, that and the other. And th these people are absolute morons. But the other thing that you might want to notice, and you know, feel free, have a look for yourself. Have a look at any of these behavioural scientist organisations. How many of these people are black? How many of these people are from ethnic minorities? Start with not bloody many and go down to none at all. So the basic point to this is that whilst you've got these morons that are going to be in something like this National Lottery Community Fund, which massive overhaul, you've got a mix of idiots that think that they're doing something right. You've got a mix of grifters and ponces. And you've got serious ideologues pushing an agenda, which is part of a much wider proposition, whereby there is this intent and I see it all the bloody time across so many of these offices, an absolute intent to cause major, major disruption and potentially set things off to such a degree that there would be this race war. Um, it's kind of a mix of making sure that they do destroy families it is a mix of making sure that people don't have children anymore. I mean, if anybody's wondered what this um, social distancing is all about, it's got fuck all to do with any virus. It's got a lot more to do with a very specific rule that is actually an actual guidance, should we say. I mean, they say it's a law, but it's not a law. That you're not allowed to sleep with anybody that is not your husband or wife immediately so you know and that, that's not i mean that's not saying that they're saying it's um that's not going on about people sort of uh, cheating or anything like that this is literally trying to keep young people away from each other as well so the birth rate goes down so hence we end up with all the eugenics shit again so this social distancing has got much more to do with eugenics than it has to do with any kind of bullshit moronavirus. So I mean, you seriously have to start thinking about the way that these bastards are playing with your minds and filling out everybody's head full of absolute shit. But in particular, on both sides of the coin here, whether you're black and an ethnic minority or whether you're white, it makes no difference. Both sides have got to understand how you're being played and what it is that they're actually trying to do to you. And both sides need to understand that you need to just turn around and say to these people, would you fuck off? We're not interested. 
not interested in the slightest. There's been a number of years in that where everybody's managed to get on. I mean, within reason, there's always some sort of crap that takes place in that. But within reason, everybody gets along pretty well. These bastards are intended, absolutely 100% intent, on making sure that they go back to their old ways. And that, well, their old ways, I mean, they've never given up on this shit. You've got your eugenics... And your eugenics includes getting rid of the elderly, the infirm, those that they deem to be unworthy. And that does mean the people that are not exactly the brightest sparks in the world. It does mean your average working class. It does mean your ethnics. It means all of the so-called undesirables. And the, the more people actually do start to understand literally the wacky racism that they're putting together and making so many people into complete morons that are not understanding this. You've got you to be smarter than them. And that really shouldn't be difficult because, like I said, these people are fucking idiots. Find out some of these behavioural insights teams and find out which companies they work for and then go and have a look at some of the videos of what these people come out with. Morons. Absolute morons. So, in order for you to fall for that, you've got to be pretty fucking stupid yourself. Seriously. So, think about this sort of stuff. And so, yes, this community fund and the whole setup would be subject to one hell of a review along with any other department that is spewing all of this race baiting cockeyed all over the place can't even keep a consistent fucking theme going as i said you know black women can't be looked after in the hospital but black women are the ones that run the hospital and they've got the best system in the world and that and it's got the best health health care system in the world but it doesn't work if you've got black people running it and that, and then black people coming into it get killed. Follow the narrative. I know they spread it out over a period of time, but follow the narrative. Keep an eye on what it is that they're saying and then link the things together and see how much bullshit it all ends up being. It, it's a matter of paying attention. And above all, not, not paying attention as well in terms of not, not being taken in by all this crap. These people are fucking scum. They really are. So, moving forward. On to... Jesus Christ. <laughs> More wacky racists. So, the National Museum's Liverpool. Fucking Liverpool. Right, let's get the, get the numbers out of the way first. Right, so we've got a net loss of 430,000. Um, as I explained last week, and that we don't we don't just go with in in this particular scenario, we don't just go with that number because you have to look into the money that they get from the taxpayer as well, that they consider to be revenue. So from that, you have to add another 23 million 200,000 pounds. So whereas I'd normally put the three numbers in together, and that I mean. Their logo and that is awkward, and it comes down too long and that, so I couldn't really fit fit it in. But it's just a basic calculation, and it comes to twenty three million six hundred thirty thousand. That's what the taxpayer burden is for these particular museums. So the organisation itself has got. Uh, I mean, it's kind of a little bit difficult to understand that because, I mean, I'm sensible. I don't go anywhere near Liverpool. Um, so it's got seven different themes. Now, whether those are different locations and that, I'm not entirely sure. It doesn't really matter. So the examples that I've got up on the screen here and that as to what these people are up to, wacky racism, 
Oh, and also in that, they added, added a bit of perversion in there as well. Why not? That's the other part to it. Eugenics freaks and pushing things as, as far that slippery slope down to the other little pastime that they're rather well known for into paedophilia. It's a fact. So, anyway. These examples that I've got on here and that, I mean, it, it, that doesn't make up the entirety. They do have some sensible stuff, stuff as well. And some normal kinds of exhibitions and what have you. But the, the, the basic point of it is, is that it's, it's, it literally is, again, it's the same old bollocks. They're still pushing the same agenda all over the bloody place. And it's going to be particularly taking place in Liverpool because... Let's face it, so Liverpool is the home of the socialist and commie morons. I and mean, it has been since Christ, what? Well, I dare say for a lot longer than that, but I mean, I, I can certainly remember the problems we used to have in the, um, was it in the 80s, that Derek Hatton and what have you. And that. Oh, fucking morons. So, I mean, for me to see stuff like this and that taking place in Liverpool is not exactly what you'd call a shocker. But then, if I sort of think about the crap that they're doing there, and then I think about the numbers again, what I have seen is that only 18% of their income is not taxpayer funding. So if, you've, if it is seven locations... I mean, even if it's not seven locations, it doesn't really matter. I mean, if you look at the photographs of the types of places they've got, these are big places and a large number of staff as well. But if only 18% of your income is coming from the actual work that you're supposed to be doing, it, again, kind of suggests that uh, in the home of the socialist and the commie, for them to actually do some work rather than screaming and shouting and punting off the taxpayer, We'll probably kind of go some way to explaining why only 18% of the revenue comes from actually getting off their ass and doing something. But then, you know, they have also got their uh, their little bit on there. Because apparently one of their heroes and that. And, and also another controversial statement, which I don't care. Apparently one of their heroes and that is... Uh, the international terrorist Nelson Mandela. So you know what he's what Nelson Mandela has got to do with Liverpool is beyond me. But apart from being a communist and a punt, but there you go, and a terrorist. So essentially, we're dealing with something that um, once again needs to be looked at massively, and as much as. I've mentioned before about how you don't want to be getting rid of actual proper history. You don't want to be getting rid of um, assets that are of a, a national importance or anything like that. But you do need to be walking through the door and that and sorting these fuckers out. And you know, if need be, and that you know, cut them loose. If that's, if that's the way it would end up being, then just cut them loose. Well, considering they can only raise 18%, they wouldn't last bloody long, would they? They li li would literally, all of these places would turn into the Chaz Chop, because that's all these people are going to do. So anyway, the update as to the scenario of looking at all the, all of the departments that I've looked at so far within DCMS. So we've got the, the total at the top that was declared by DCMS, 5.5 billion the office cumulative from last week because I did put that um, community fund in the calculation you'll notice that the office cumulative has dropped again so um, still a long way to go and we'll see how that works out <coughs> COVID um, right the policy developments so no real, no real change to the um, the taxpayer burden because lottery funding, etc., etc. Potentially would change if we end up removing all funding from the um, museum. So basically, what we're dealing with here is that the National Heritage 
National Heritage Memorial Fund would be delisted, taken out of any kind of government relationship. And then the wacky racism of the National Lottery Community Fund would go through one hell of a reform and quite likely the, an awful lot of the funding going into these um, racist and misandrist little buddy charities that would uh, that would end so that would be a, a particular part that I would get rid of and in terms of the National Museums of Liverpool we've got this one here NML nice little one for the uh, for the Scousers well basically what they'll have to do is they'll have to imagine no socialists or communists on board because it isn't hard to do nothing for them to ponce from and if it's a derm if it's determined appropriate no assets too imagine a world with no commies or socialists now that really would be a world in peace <laughs> fuck off john lennon So, into the solutions. I really, I need to have some music or something that gives me a little bit of a break while I'm doing this. So, you've been having fun this week. There's been some right idiotic nonsense taking place again. The uh, crap at the, I mean, look, I mean Anybody that's been watching some of the stuff that I put up on mine tomorrow, I, again, I haven't put every, everything up on that because there's too much of it. But all this crap over these bloody vaccine passports and all that sort of shit, and and they've extended the coronavirus act. Of course they have, fucking commie cunts. Anyway, the one thing I want to turn around and start off the solutions with this week is based on essentially I don't want people to be telling me that you know there's too there's too few people that are not being complicit with all of this crap I don't want people telling me that everybody literally everybody is a sheep and they're all sold on this crap because quite plainly not true The uh, the protest that took off took place all over the world. I mean, London was a particularly big one. I know there were other protests in um, Leeds and in um, Manchester as well. I dare say there were a fair few others around the country. Nothing to do with the Bristol false flag. And when it comes down to representation, where I've given some suggestions of how you have these independents and things like that before we've got time to set up that kind of system depending on how quick all of these people can actually um, watch my video and learn how to do it um, there are a couple of choices as an interim so as we can see from the crowd in London we've got a particular Mr Lawrence Fox down the bottom there who I don't think like I said I don't think by any stretch in that would be an amazing politician but I don't care it's moving away from the established parties who are blatantly anti their own nation and sold on this agenda shit. No established parties have got any intention to look after anybody any more than but themselves. So don't vote for them. I had mentioned again anybody that's watched the stuff in the past and that about the um, the Heritage Party with David Curtin. I didn't see a picture of David Curtin at the uh, the protest, but I'm sure he was there somewhere. He tends to be turning up to these um, protests most of the other times. And as much as I've had my issues with the Heritage Party, it doesn't matter. I'd still rather people went for somebody like the Heritage Party or with Lawrence Fox, rather than these established criminals. So check on, on your area as to who is standing as, in, as an independent or whether they are standing for the Reclaim Party the Reform Party, though I don't trust them either. 
or the um, the Heritage Party, start putting some weight behind the people that are going to that are literally turning around and saying we're going to end this crap. Because the one thing that everybody's really got to keep in mind here is that the ch one of the chants that is often stated in most of these protests and that you've got to keep front and centre, we are the 99%. Don't forget that. Sitting back and wetting your bed because there's the latest bit of propaganda coming out, forget it. If that's, if that's the way you want to be in that, turn off your fucking television for a start. Stop listening to the propaganda. Or at least, as I explained in the last bit, understand what the propaganda actually is and how it makes no sense whatsoever. So understand that people are not on their own. So the next part of the solution and a proper solution, and one which I didn't really think I was ever going to talk about, because I mean I'll show you something in the next slide and that that shows you exactly how good I am at this sort of stuff. But right, I'm not a fan. I will say immediately, I'm not a fan of the um, the philosophy of. Is it agorism or agorism? However you want to pronounce it. I'm not a fan of it because it, it it's not, first and foremost, not, it's got too many things in common with your socialists and communists. And it also presents nothing remotely like a national solution. It might be okay in that to have your little communities and that and basically setting up a little hippie camp that is a little bit more competent than your Chaz Chop Twats. But it's still not far off the same thing. You're just able to grow food. That's the only difference. And you don't use try to grow it on top of a pizza box. But anyway, there are elements to this that I'm going to have to get off my arse and do some of this myself as well. And that's so that I don't end up being one of these people that doesn't follow up with my own advice. But again, I will show, I'll show you that what I've got to deal with in that in a minute. Um, but basically what we've got here is an issue of certain terminology, certain things that are coming out at the moment that are kind of giving an indication as to the next steps that they're going to be trying in terms of the little path to destruction because you know you can't build back until you've destroyed and they've already started the rhetoric around um, water shortages despite the fact that you know this is the UK it pisses down the rain all the fucking time but they'll still you know two days without without rain and they say you've got a water shortage because again they think that people are that thick there's also these um, these continual rhetoric around the food shortages. So to me, this kind of it ends up being signals that again, I mean, they'll turn around and say, "Oh, it's climate change, it's climate change." No, it's you pricks like blowing up food warehouses in Essex and places like that. There's a whole range of stuff that's yeah, I, I, won't, I won't go into here. But basically, in that, it's it's a kind of a pre-warning that there is going to be an issue around water and food because if the eugenics freaks don't get to kill you through jabbing you they'll try to fucking starve you it does seem logical to me that people need to be looking towards what you need to do to make sure that you're okay and being able to make use of your own garden primarily does kind of make sense and uh, there are certain scenarios I mean I've seen a, a project out in uh, California I mean I'd, I'd have to look into it in more detail because just on the face of it the economics of it and that don't make a great deal of sense but if you don't have a garden yourself and that you, there, are, there are potentials to be able to set up where you have to be doing it in your local community where you find out if there's anybody got a back garden that they're not using that you can rent from them basically um, I know that we have a system over here where you have like what's, what's called an, an allotment 
and they're quite hard to get a hold of. And that's basically for people that don't have the space to grow their own vegetables and things like that. And so you've got this like council property that is divided up into sections and people can rent that and then they go out there and, that, and they make, make their own vegetables and you know, the usual shit. So if you can't get an allotment and you haven't got a garden of your own, it might be wise to have a look around in the community, see if, see if there is something going on where you can get involved and potentially use other people's gardens, like I say, properly with permission and all the rest of it. But if you do have some sort of ability to start growing your own food, it does seem like a, a wise thing to be preparing for. I mean, at the end of the day now, I mean, even if you're thinking, well, okay, I'm not going to believe all this agenda shit. I don't think they're going to get rid of all of us and they're not going to attack this and they're not going to attack that. Even if you looked at it from the perspective, well, first and foremost, if you do, if you are doing some gardening, that gives you a bit of bloody exercise. It makes use of your garden, and it cuts down on your food bills. So, I mean, just from a a basic logical perspective, I mean, it ends up being an issue for people like me because I fucking hate gardening. And when it comes down to stuff like that, I'm either useless at it or I'm a lazy bastard. You know, I'm the one that sits in front of the computer all day long and that doing me work, so. But I am going to be getting off my arse, and I have been getting off my arse a little bit, and again, I will demonstrate that in a moment. Um, so you can, you can look at it from whichever way you want to, and that you don't have to be looking at it from some sort of a, a political statement. You don't have to look at it as something that... It's going to turn you into some like a what they call them a prepper or anything like that. It you can look at it in whichever way you want to really, because it it does have a, a reasonable end benefit whichever way it is that you do it. And if there does end up being some sort of a problem or anything like that, I mean yes, the you you might end up having to protect your garden, but that's why I mean if you if the more you've got some sort of a community together on these things the more you'll be able to look after it. Um, depending on the size of the garden, depends on what you can do. Have you got the space to be able to dig your own well? And that is possible. It's a bugger. I have put a link in the description as to how you actually go about that. And um, it's anywhere, you need to dig down anywhere between 100 and 200 feet. <laughs> so we're not talking about something that is a, you know, a simple thing to do, but then, Everything that people do, like I said, I mean, one of the key reasons why we've had a lot of these issues in the first place is because everybody's become too lazy. So if you do have to actually get your hands dirty and that and do something that's a bit difficult, well, you know, tough shit. That's the price of freedom, isn't it? And it's going to be a good price if you actually get to bloody feed yourself and have some water. So apparently there are, there are laws on whether you're allowed to dig a well or anything like that, but, you know, do what you want with that. That's up to you. I don't care. And, um, again, depending on the size of garden that you got, it doesn't take up too much space, but it is possible to have a few chickens in the back garden. Get your eggs. And though I haven't looked into the details of it yet, but in terms of being able to raise a few chickens as well, and then you've got some meat. Unfortunately, I think I'd struggle to fit a cow in the back garden. But if I could, I would. But anyway, there's various different things that you can do in that. I mean, you can have a little, have a little greenhouse, and that's how you can grow some your fruits like the, um, your strawberries and tomatoes and things like that. Um, I can't remember if the cucumbers are made in a greenhouse or whether that's just planted in the garden. It's like I said, I'm, I'm no expert on this. I'm literally diving into this with no knowledge whatsoever, but I'm gonna read what I need to read and get a, get a handle on it. It's going to take me a long time, but, you know, you just get started. But essentially, I mean, there is no real downside to you getting off your ass and doing stuff like this. And if anybody's out there thinking, well, it seems like a bit of a mountain and I don't really want to do it and oh, it's going to take up my time and this, this, that and the other. Well, another way to think about it as well is that the more time you're outside in the garden, the more time you're going to end up having some, getting out in the sunlight and getting your vitamin D, 
which uh, fights off your Marana virus. And it's more time that you're away from the television and the propaganda. More benefits. So I'm gonna give you a bit of a, an indication as to the mountain that I've got to climb. Because this is literally my back garden. And I've let, I basically let it go for something like maybe four or five years. I mean, massively overgrown trees. There's the um, I don't I don't know what you call it and that. There's the stuff that grows. The entirety of those walls were green, covered in green stuff. So I've literally had to pull everything off the walls. Of you remember I showed my um, chainsaw, chopped down the trees. And I've got this massive pile now in the, that covers the entirety of the garden that I've now got to start setting fire to. <laughs> and that's what the little bin is for. So as much as I'm going to start off by doing some burning in the bin, at some point I'm going to have to make sure I've got a nice big pile set fire to that bugger as well. And so that's the kind of crap that I've got to deal with. And it is my intention to be able to put all of that mess into order and actually start growing stuff. And I have got some space out there where I might have some might have some chickens or something like that. Quite a while in the future yet, because whenever I do go out there and that I don't spend an enormous amount of time out there at all. It literally is like an hour or two each day. Or every other day, one or the other. Kind of depends on what the weather is and all the rest of it. But once again, it's one of those scenarios whereby I'm not just turning around and saying this to you and not doing anything of the sort myself. I am going to put my money where my mouth is. I am in the sort of situation where I know nothing about growing my own food or anything like that. But I'm going to get off my arse and learn how to do it. Because I will practice what I preach. Now... The chances of me being able to put up a video that shows that being absolutely amazing come back in about six years and it might be. Because <laughs> like I say, I do take that long. But if even if I'm just plodding along with it and that and making gradual progress, it doesn't matter. It's still doing something towards the end goal. So, like I said, I mean, I don't just turn around and say, think about this, think about that, and then don't do any of it myself. I do actually do those things. Fairly similar to, as I'd said before, when stop using smartphones because they're all piss-taking arseholes and they're watching you and all the rest of it. Get yourself a little, what they call a dumb phone. It's just a regular phone. You don't need to have something where somebody's following you all day long and then sending you bloody advertisements for shit that you don't need. These things are not difficult. Well... It is difficult, but you know, it's in all in all seriousness. It's it's not it's not something that you're incapable of doing. Is the point? So, if people actually bothered to think about small things like that, can you can you turn your garden into something where you can actually then feed yourself? And then you, you, start, you start building up to going, right, I'll, I've managed to achieve that, I've managed to achieve that, I've managed to achieve that next step. I've got some more independence now. That I don't need to be reliant on all this stuff. I'm, I don't need to be buying crap that I don't need. I don't need to be taking orders from idiots that don't know what they're talking about. I don't need to be listening to their race-baiting, wacky racist shit. I don't need these people. Then... What I do need to do is to help to make sure that not only am I being, not only am I okay in that, but how? What about everybody else around me? Because if you're only thinking of yourself, if everybody else just thinks of themselves as well, chances are that somebody that doesn't have the space for a garden and that isn't involved in some sort of a an effort along these lines. Then they're going to have to come, knock, come if they don't come knocking on your door, they'll come climbing over your back garden because they're going to have to eat as well. 
in the worst case scenario. And then you can think, well, okay, how do we start implementing this particular system that I've been discussing? Is it possible for, for an independent to get into a position where they can actually be the proper representatives, the ones that we've actually gone through the proper criteria to make sure that they are the right person? Can we have an independent that's representing us rather than reliant on agenda-seeking bastards? Yes, you can, because we are the 99%. You can count, off top, I've already explained in the previous videos, how you actually make sure you know how many people have voted. There's a, this, isn't, <coughs> this isn't a new form of socialism or anything like that, by any stretch of the imagination. But it is a method of people being able to be individual whilst working together with others to make sure that we don't get put into the absolute shit show of being locked, you know, basically being told that you can't go out your own house or all that sort of stuff by dictatorial morons that are telling you that they're following the science and then you find out the scientists are idiots and that these people that are, they're claiming that is the science and that they're idiots. Everything that comes out of their mouth makes no bloody sense whatsoever. And at the end of the day, the only thing they result in is fucking with you. There's, there's, there are solutions to things. And the key thing about solutions to things is it has to have practicality to it. It has to be something that you can actually do yourself. It's, it has to be something where you know damn well that what it is that you're doing is not going to be causing issues to other people. But it's still maintaining that you can have your own freedoms to do the things that we should be allowed to do. And you're not being divided and you're not being dictated to and you're not being lied to. And we all actually learn to understand, like I said, those key principles again. Honesty, responsibility, integrity, basics, just absolute basics. And then we, we build back better, but not under their terms of building back bloody better. Not interested in their bloody socialist diktats at all more interested in how do we actually do things properly so that i mean is, is everybody a wonderful person and everybody has to be looked after of course not there's dickheads all over the place you deal with them accordingly or you just don't have anything to do with them i mean there's lots of people that walk along that that are absolute bloody morons but it doesn't mean to say that they don't need that they shouldn't exist i'm sure there's somebody else that thinks they're absolutely wonderful that's called personalities individuals not everybody's the bloody same there is no equality of outcome it doesn't exist so anyway the solution this week was <laughs> we all become gardeners which you know why not why not i mean i've i've managed to uh take the first step in terms of losing a decent bit of weight while all this bullshit's been going on so now i need to uh make sure that i can keep that weight off keep myself uh, get myself a little bit fitter than i am because uh like i said i do like my beer and my fags but i'm not looking to run a bloody marathon so who gives a shit so anyway i think that will be enough rambling for today and um, have a think about some of this stuff and like as i say, always feel free to make your comments suggestions all the rest of it and uh yeah if i don't end up with something that suddenly has to come out as a a commentary short like i did last week um what was that one called star of david i think the one that i did last week was um about those vaccine passports and whatever and that but assuming i don't have to do another one which there is always a potential because i've got that many things going on that many irons in the fire at the moment 
Um, assuming that there isn't another one, then I will see you next week in episode 34. No idea what that will be about. But it'll be following the process and me coming up with some more, hopefully, <laughs> minorly possible logical solutions. But uh, anyway, do all of the, the usual. Uh, I don't know. If it, I, don't, I don't know if it applies properly in Rumble. The like, share, subscribe shit. But yeah, I think there's only about five people subscribed. Really popular this. But anyway, doesn't matter. Have a good week. And uh, I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.